Today on Toy Shiz, Protein Shakes and Roy Rages Abound, let's talk toys. Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look courtesy of my friends over at Mattel, and today we are going to be checking out their brand new Mattel Masterverse based on the He-Man Masters of the Universe Revelation series is going to be hitting Netflix in July, and we're going to check out basically the four figures that are left. These are the basics, Moss Man, Skeletor, He-Man, and Evil-In. These four will go to Walmart first, hopefully sometime during the summertime, no dates exactly given, but yeah, they'll be first to market for Walmart, and then they will go elsewhere. Target gets Skelegod and Battle Cat, so... It's fantastic, right? <laughs> Moss Man's got some gorgeous artwork. Go check out Eamon O'Donohue for that. And then I will attach all the barcodes. So when they do start in Walmarts, you'll have them in hand. Hey, guess what? The package designer Roy Juarez and everyone that worked on the Mattel Masters team, they had the collectors in mind. You simply just cut the top where it says Masterverse, peel it open. And then you can slip the trays right out. Each one comes in a clamshell, and you can fit all the characters back in if and when you're done playing with them. So very cool to see. Evil Lynn looks great. I gotta say that I like the design of this character. She comes with a lot of different accessories, a lot of different hands. Nice packaging, nice artwork. Everything has a very commanding presence to it. And when you use this type of artwork, I just think it, it just adds a little bit of brevity to the toy aisle, you know what I mean? It gives it that classy, fancy look. Here's the barcode for Eva Lynn as well. So again, yeah, hopefully she hits Walmart shelves sooner than later. Skeletor, very excited about this guy. Very excited that Mark Hamill is voicing him. Now, I know this is a continuation of the Filmation series, but to be honest with you, just getting into He-Man with He-Man Origins... This is looking to be, I've seen bits and pieces of the 200X series or whatever, but this looks like a really cool looking series, so I'm stoked on it, and I like the whole marketing aspect, you got toys coming for the new show, it's gonna be on Netflix, two-parter, yada yada, it looks really cool, it's kind of like that Castlevania powerhouse animation, He-Man, which I've already taken a look at, if you want to check out the video, he will be in this video, all the figures will be in this video, but because I've already looked at him in depth, you can check out he along with Battle Cat for a very in-depth look if you want to go that route. Skelegod as well. He was the first figure that I found at Target stores. He's very cool. He has his own separate video. He will pop up in this video for scale and whatnot, but here's the barcode if you still need him. Grab him at Target. The packaging on this is a threefold, right? You got the basics, you got the deluxe, and you got the mega-sized vehicles. They're about roughly the size of a Marvel Legends figure, the more basic type figures, but they're kind of more in line with, say, the new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse. I'm a packaging nerd. Really dig that. So this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Revelation Series 1 action figures by Mattel. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, here are all the toys out of their packaging. They're going to do this little, little turny disc thing, right, that I use in all my videos. They're really cool looking. And I think that they match the animation. Really bright colors. That's the one thing that I like about the He-Man Origins. Very bright colors. We'll start it off with... Moss Man, or Swamp Thing, <laughs> let's be quite honest with you. He doesn't have any, like, soft goods, he doesn't feel like moss or anything like that. He's all solid plastic, but he does come with this really cool, like, tendril, vines, bark, whatever you want to call it, very plant-like. You can see how his hands, like the fingertips, kind of morph into the tree branches of this, and that's very cool. You just simply put it, it's basically like a hand attachment uh, very rubbery. It's a very heavy piece, though. Very, very heavy. So he thinks already what's going to happen with that. But I'll show it off in just a second. And uh, yeah, you get some articulation. It'll rock back and forth once you have it in place in his arm. Does come with a lot of different hands, which is very cool because being a Moss Man, you get to really show off the detail. And the Mattel team really did a great job with this. All the little fingers plant life, the foliage, foliage, 
depending on which Simpsons character you're going to go with on that. But you got weapon holding hands, you got outstretched hands, you got creepy hands. Very cool. I definitely like the way that they gave us so many different hands for this guy. Moss Man really does bring the sculpt on him, though. Some parts could have maybe dealt with uh, maybe black wash, something like that. He does have peg holes on the bottom of his feet. He's very flat footed. He's kind of hard to stand sometimes. That's just one nitpick about the figure. But the sculpt is there, the detail. I love seeing all the different elements of Mother Nature on this guy. He's got some head articulation. I mean, it works for what I'm looking for. Kind of looks up, looks down, but he will go left and right. The ab crunch is pretty much non-existent. He'll spin at the waist, but it's very stuck. It doesn't really move all that much. You simply kind of just get this movement out of it. And I really like that little leaf sticking off the side of his shoulder. He will put his arms all the way up. They'll go out to the side. Really nice movement in the arms, so I'm definitely happy with that. Maybe butterfly joints would have been an icing on the cake. We'll just say he's got bicep swivel. He's got double jointed elbows. I like that with all the different sculpting aspects of his moss body, it all kind of works and fits together. Now with the legs, go easy. Like I said, with He-Man, it kind of freaks me out. You know, kind of heard like a popping sound. He's got double jointed knees. He's got thigh swivel. He doesn't really have the best feet because they're so flat He and it doesn't really rock like he doesn't have ankle rock, you know what I mean? It's kind of just more an up and down. So that's kind of unfortunate just in the sense when you want to get him in some more dynamic poses. And like I said, he's kind of hard to stand. I really like his hands, right? Really creepy looking hands. But the best part is, actually I would say the best part is, but it's also kind of a, eh, I wish this could have been done a little bit better, maybe like a clip on piece. The tree branch extendable hand thing is very heavy. It'll fit, but it really doesn't support the weight from his arm. If you get it in a certain angle, it'll stay, but for the most part, it's just very, very heavy on old Moss Man. But I think the look is achieved, like he's outstretching, he's gonna take down Skeletor or He-Man or whoever this guy fights, I don't know. But he's cool looking, I just wish that was a little bit better. Now with Evelyn, or how when she got to college, changed her name to Evelyn. To be quite honest with you, out of all of these figures, I think that they really nailed the animated look for this character. She comes with a satchel, purse, green goblin bag, little element of red, little tassel on the side, very stretchy, very gummy, and it could fit over the figure. Heck, you could put it on He-Man too, if you were wondering, just gonna... <laughs> Sorry. You got some hands, a lot of different hands. The one thing, the paint doesn't go all the way around. See on the, how her costume would attach. Kind of like that ring looking thing. I really wish they would have painted that. Multiple hands, weapon holding hands, fisted holding hands, whatever you want to call them. The head portrait on her unmasked, or I say unhelmeted look with the long hair, is quite a gorgeous sculpt. Very cool on that face. She does have her staff. Now in the trailer, you see that Tila breaks it in half. Could be that. I don't know, is it a different staff? I don't really care. Then you have the two head portraits side by side. And again, I think they really nailed the look. She's a gorgeous looking figure. I like the eyebrows, she's very sinister, right? Totally dig that for Eva Lynn. Here is what I was saying, it looks like the staff is broken or it, I don't know, does, it, does she have two? You can tell me in the comments below. The overall look for this figure is really well done. The joints are really secure. She's got a great sculpt to her and the articulation on her works really well. By far, this is the most complete figure in terms of everything working and then all the accessories and the head sculpt with one minor thing I will show you in just a second. The costume works with her, works with the articulation. I like the boots. The feet are very sturdy. There's no problems like we'll say with like kind of had with Skelegod a little bit. And the articulation works with the neck, with the head. Looks up, looks down, a lot more up than most of the other characters, I'll tell you that, but mostly left and right. Works great. She will put her arms all the way up. One thing I like about these figures is that they put their arms all the way down, all the way up. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, spins at the wrists. Very nice articulation. And she has the best ab crunch. It actually works on her. I'll show you Skeletor in just a second, but for her, I think it works with a waist. She does have slits down the side of her dress. You could say she could do the splits 
If you'd like, she'll kick out, do the splits, all that kind of stuff. She's got double jointed knees. She's got boot rotation right there. And then she also has thigh swivel. So again, very heavily articulated with some nice feet that'll rock back and forth. This is a great Evil Lynn figure. I'll tell you all day. You can put the weapons right there in her little weapon holster thing right there if you want to go that route. And yeah, that works for me. You could put the purse on her if you want. Maybe it's her potion holding bag. I don't know. Give it to He-Man. <laughs> Who cares? Have fun, right? Then with the heads. Here's the one little caveat problem I was telling you about. The head fits great until you push it all the way down, and then it looks like she has no neck. So there's no stoppage in the head for the ball joint that makes it look good. So she has no neck now. So you, what you kind of have to do is pull the head up just a bit. Otherwise, it'll go down way too far. It does kind of do the gappage in between her hair like it doesn't sit naturally. So you push it down. It just looks like she got bopped on the head, and then she's got, like, you know, death becomes her neck in a way. But yeah, very cool, articulates, the hair kind of gets in the way, so you're not going to get much out of it, but as far as just head swappage, she looks good. Skeletor. This is a very cool figure, minus the cape. Again, he's got the Skeletor type cape, which isn't the best, but it is a really cool, I love the purples, the blues, really makes him sinister evil right there, all the colors of evil right there, purple. He does have a couple different accessories for him, and overall, just based on what I've seen in the show, yeah, I think it works really, really well. He does come with the shaping staff. Yeah, I did my research. It's that thing that turned Tila into a frog and He-Man into a gold statue. What did I even just say? Who knows? He's got some extra hands as well, like a, a hand shaking hand and then a trigger holding gun hand in case, you know, he has to go that route. Or it's kind of like a figure pointing come hither kind of hand. The Havoc staff rocks on this this is very cool very evil very skeleton right with the horns the ram horns this is cool very commanding very evil looking love that part from the trailer where it like morphs i don't know what it's doing it also swivels if in case you were wondering and the cool thing is is that if you wanted to take it off the top of the staff yeah it also removes goes back on nicely so i don't know you find something to do with it works for me skeletor very cool figure. He does really look like the animation. I think that the skull could have been a little bit more white. It's a little bit too dark to match exactly the animation. But I think the blues, the purples, his clawed feet. The cape is okay. It's that felt again, which I'm not totally stoked on. I think it does look better than Skelegods, I'll say that. But nice paint on his... Skeletor uniform. As far as the head portrait, I think it looks pretty good. He has these really cool eyes, which have like white, it captures the light perfectly, so it looks like he has pupils in some lights. He will spin at the head, kind of goes up, kind of goes down, the arms, biceps swivel, double jointed elbows, swivels at the wrist. He gets a little bit more momentum, little motion than He-Man will just say. He kind of shares the same body as He-Man, but with different parts to make him Skeletor. Same thing with the legs. He's got thigh swivel, double jointed knees. They're a little bit stuck. Go easy on him. He'll swivel at the calf, we'll say, and he's got some nice feet articulation. He stands really nicely. So none of that loose stuff that kind of Skeletor had befallen him. Yeah, unfortunately, in terms of his wrists, though, they're very loose when holding the Havoc Staff. The Havoc Staff is very top-heavy, so you will run into that, depending on where he kind of holds the staff. The other one works just fine. No problems there. It's very light. But overall, I think you're really going to like this Skeletor. In terms of how they scale with one another, I would say Mattel did a great job. Now, I don't know how tall Moss Man is, but I definitely see He-Man being the largest character, followed by Skeletor, followed by Evil Lynn. So hopefully Moss Man fits in correctly. He-Man is just a little bit taller than Moss Man, with Moss Man and Skeletor being the same size. He-Man overpowering Skeletor, Skeletor being taller than Evil Lynn, with Evil Lynn being the smallest. So, yeah. I think that within the scale of these characters, it works nicely. In terms of McFarlane toys, they're in that seven inch mark, so they'll fit really well. So I think that if you're interested, yeah, this can go together. Marvel Legends, I would say these characters would be bigger than most. So I think you can fudge it in there. And if you want to put it with two hotheads like Ghost Rider, yeah, 
think that works. Skeligod is taller than Skeletor, which again, we don't really know if the scaling is correct on the guy. Skeletor is seven inch, Skeligod is eight inch, but I would see that as being correct. If you're interested in swapping the heads, don't do that. <laughs> it looks really bad. Really teeny tiny little horn head for Skeletor and cloaked head for Skeligod. While we're here, in case you were wondering, you can take the armor piece off, just pop the head off Skeletor. You can pop the cape off. It's a basic body, yada, yada. The Havoc Staff looks really cool with Skeligod. I think that looks amazing. I think I need that chair from Super 7's Snake Mountain. Just saying, that's really cool. This looks amazing. The Origins Tupac Skeletor head. Looks good on him. I think it fits with the purple. I dig that a lot. Looks very commanding. Kind of has like a really old school comics 80s look to him. In terms of the other Origins figures, yeah, you know, these are going to dwarf them, of course. And if you're wondering for He-Man classics, if this He-Man I got from Mexico is any indication, they'll more or less fit in with the classics line. Overall, I'm going to say that for this entirety of Wave 1 for the Motu Revelations, it's a pretty solid first offering. There are some loose joints here and there. There's some wonkiness here and there, but those are just minor things. When the overall totality of the figures look great, scale well, got lots of different accessories. I think you're really going to like these if they're your thing, if you're going to be into the cartoon. Maybe wait till the cartoon just to be on the safe side. Skeletor overall, pretty solid, has some minor loose joints. I'm not a huge fan of the cape, but I think in terms of what I see for the animation, that's Mark Hamill right there. Skelegod has some loose ankles. That's kind of like a universal issue. Loose parts here and there, but when standing there, has a very commanding presence, and I still don't like the cape on that guy. <laughs> Evil Inn, like I said, I think fares the best out of all of these figures. Solid articulation. I would say she's the most on model of all the characters, with Mossman being a close second. He does suffer some articulation problems here and there, and unfortunately his big moss hand, tree hand, is a little bit too heavy for his body. But sculpt-wise, yeah, he does rock. Can't say enough nice things about Battle Cat. Great vehicle, great huge green tiger, very cool he turns into Cringer. I like the armor, I like the articulation. Hands down, solid, solid entry. And He-Man, minus the Owen Wilson face, I think. I mean, I still like the figure, I think he's pretty cool. So again, overall, very, very solid wave first offering from Mattel. But I am curious to know what you guys think about these new figures. Are they for you? Will you be picking them up? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Masters of the Universe Revelation. And thank you again to Mattel for sending over the remaining figures to give you guys this fresh look. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, have fun with your toys. Go out, hopefully find them soon, and we can all watch the cartoon together and go, yeah, that's good, or oh, I don't know about that. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.